Embark with me on a journey into the mind's recesses as we explore the complex world of obsessive-compulsive disorder, its roots, effects, and avenues for treatment. Diving right into the crux of our discussion, obsessive-compulsive disorder, also known as OCD. This chronic yet common mental health condition is characterized by relentless, intrusive thoughts like a fear of contamination. These thoughts spearhead a sequence of compulsive behaviors. As if experiencing a tidal wave, people with OCD find themselves building makeshift rafts in form of behaviors like excessive handwashing, driven by an intense urge to alleviate the distress ignited by the obsessions. However, understanding OCD isn't just about identifying obsessions and compulsions. It's about realizing the shadow this disorder casts over work, social interactions, and everyday routines of those afflicted. It's like carrying an invisible yet burdensome pack which cannot be set down even when acknowledged as irrational. Building a bridge of hope, we emphasize that understanding these unique patterns opens up pathways to tailored therapies. This understanding is akin to dousing the fiery obsessions and fettering compulsions, ultimately enhancing life quality for those affected by OCD. Navigate the remainder of our journey here as we continue to shine light on further insights and therapeutic techniques for managing OCD. Firstly, let's probe into what fuels OCD. Predominantly starring are obsessions, repetitive, intrusive thoughts and fears that loom large, casting a somber pall on the mindscape. It's like an uninvited guest that refuses to depart, persistently echoing fears of contamination or nagging doubts of an unplugged iron. Such obsessions are underpinned by certain brain functions and cognitive patterns. It's as if our own thoughts conspire against us, pressing a potent replay button on these distressing thoughts, causing an existential gnawing that feels as real as any physical threat. Consequently, these obsessions dictate a scaffolding of compulsive behaviors, rituals arrogantly parading as solutions to alleviate this distress. But they're deceptive. The cycle of relief they offer merely temporary and escalating into a crippling paradox where succumbing to the compulsion merely feeds the beast of the obsession. Despite attempts at concealment, these compulsions imprint themselves, seizing control of daily routines and social interactions, reducing life quality. Yet lean into understanding. It's our beacon of hope, illuminating pathways to therapy and easing the weight of OCD. Cognitive behavioral therapy, coupled with exposure and response prevention, has proven to be a potent concoction. Through incremental controlled exposure to distress sources, it can disarm the obsessions, loosen their stranglehold, and offer those impacted a taste of freedom and control. Ancient interpretations of obsessive-compulsive disorder phenomenally perceive it as a demonic possession or divine punishment, steering the therapeutic inclinations towards exorcisms, herbal remedies, and asylum confinement. Historical parallels, marked by this supernatural line of thought, starkly differentiate from contemporary narratives which have gradually transitioned to natural explanations rooted in psychological and medical science. This shift, a significant milestone, emerged in the inspiring wake of burgeoning psychological theories in the 18th and 19th centuries. Illuminative breakthroughs like the theories proposed by psychological pioneers like Sigmund Freud, who daringly delved into the labyrinth of obsessions and compulsions, played an impactful role in enhancing our understanding. Furthermore, unperturbed perseverance in the scientific dissection of OCD led to the identification of involved brain structures and the commendable development of cognitive behavioral therapy. These therapeutic tools, coupled with the resilience of those navigating OCD, signify hope and reinforce the concept of OCD not as demonic wrath, but rather as a manageable disorder with tailored treatments. Striding forward, this scientific understanding presents an optimistic outlook, offering symptomatic relief and improved life quality. Hereditary attributes set the stage for OCD with specific genes playing influential roles. It's been observed that genetic predisposition can be dormant, only to awaken upon stressful situations or traumatic events. Indeed, it's a potential occupant lying in wait, ready to seize control when vulnerabilities appear, much like a virus exploiting a weakened immune system. Like other genetic disorders, genetic testing for OCD offers early intervention opportunities yet simultaneously opens Pandora's box of ethical questions. Similarly, brain structures cast their influential impact on our understanding of OCD. More specifically, the orbitofrontal cortex, basal ganglia, and thalamus have been implicated in OCD. 
Advancements in MRI and fMRI techniques provide unprecedented access to uncover these secrets. These imaging techniques bring to light the tangible differences in brain structures, the uncharted territories behind the many faces of OCD. With each revelation, we're able to comprehend more deeply the labyrinth that is OCD. But it's not just about mapping. These findings guide us towards potential therapeutic approaches like cognitive behavioral therapy, which fosters neuroplastic changes. An empowering ally, CBT validates the changes possible, even for conditions once deemed immutable like OCD. External stressors bear significant influence on OCD, often initiating or exacerbating its symptoms. Consider life's inevitable transitions or an unexpected trauma. These tumultuous times can stir the embers of dormant predispositions, intensifying OCD's incessant drumbeat. Simultaneously, our learned behaviors from family dynamics or personal experiences often act as silent accomplices, harboring OCD's vicious cycles. Imagine a peace-loving individual learning to avoid distressing situations from a parent, a defense mechanism that unwittingly abets OCD's stranglehold, nudging pernicious obsessions and compulsions further into the room of their psyche. The biopsychosocial model offers us a lens to view OCD's intricate tapestry holistically, infusing new colors into the stark black and white of mere neurological perspectives. It underscores the interplay of biology, psychology, and social factors, bolstering an evolved approach to OCD treatment. Our journey charting the territory beyond the brain accentuates the need to account for these environmental factors and learned behaviors when dealing with OCD. This understanding shifts our focus, spotlighting a tapestry more intricately woven than once assumed. It signals the call to blend empathy with scientific understanding, fostering a more comprehensive healthcare approach that mends the mind and inspires hope. Selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, or SSRIs, have forever changed the face of OCD treatment. Born in the 1980s wave of medication-based therapy, these wonders normalize serotonin levels in the brain, thereby reducing the overactivity of certain areas associated with OCD. This shift towards SSRIs ushered in substantial improvements in patient outcomes, but it wasn't without its caveats. Side effects like insomnia and nausea occasionally disrupted patients' lives, hence the need for personalized dosing strategies. With calculated adjustments, SSRIs strike a therapeutic balance that minimizes side effects while maximizing symptom control. On another promising front, we find exposure and response prevention, or ERP, nestled within cognitive behavioral therapy, CBT. This unique tool set molds a space where patients are exposed to triggers without the compulsion to respond, reshaping old anxiety rituals into new coping tactics. The crux of its effectiveness lies in the data. A substantial number of patients report significant symptom alleviation or even remission, offering a glint of optimism to those navigating OCD. Armed with these therapeutic advancements, we can transform the daunting challenge of OCD into a manageable endeavor, sculpting footpaths towards an enhanced quality of life through mental health. The precision in diagnosing OCD becomes apparent as we delve into its diagnostic criteria, including the rigorous standards established by the DSM-5. In unraveling this complex disorder, we turn our attention to intrusive thoughts and compulsive behaviors, earned prominent roles as the leading indicators in identifying OCD. However, this is only scratching the surface. Nuanced assessment involving frequency, duration, and intensity of these symptoms pave the path to an accurate diagnosis. Borrow the tale of Alex for a moment, whose panic disorder speculations transitioned to OCD due to a compulsive hand-washing regime, overcoming the fear of contamination. Misdiagnosis or delayed diagnoses muddle treatment efficacy, hinting at the game of dominoes set in motion. The complexity of OCD witnesses a staggering overlap with other mental health conditions, often hosting comorbidities. A multifaceted approach for diagnosis, therefore, becomes not just an option, but a necessity, demanding the incorporation of clinical interviews, self-reports, and potentially neuropsychological testing. OCD diagnosis thus emerges as an intricate mosaic, each tile an epicenter of a crucial diagnostic tool. Armored with knowledge and understanding, we tread further into the complex terrain of obsessive-compulsive disorder. Today, our emphasis rests on two pillars that fortify mental strength, harnessing support and ingrained self-management. Imagine you're standing in a storm, 
the invisible weight of OCD managing to pierce your shelter. Wouldn't you seek safe haven in a lighthouse? That's precisely what our first pillar, social support, represents. Close-knit connections, echoing shared experiences, serve as a formidable defense line, softening OCD's blows. Coping strategies traded within such groups infuse optimism, inspiring individuals to tackle OCD head-on, no longer overshadowed by the monster under the bed. Now what if we told you that the best line of defense often lies within one's own armory? That's right. Self-management forms the bedrock of striving, not surrendering against OCD. Structured routine builds a fortress against the spiraling thoughts, reducing empty crevices for OCD to slip in. Core practices like yoga and meditation gently coax mental resilience, maintaining a semblance of control amid the maelstrom. Our lesson here elucidates that intertwined threads of outward support and inward strength are formidable tools against OCD. Bridging these elements, we navigate together onto pathways of improved well-being, making living with OCD not just a battle, but a triumphant journey. Deep brain stimulation serves as an intriguing beacon of hope in treating OCD, especially in cases resistant to traditional therapies. This neurological approach modifies the functionality of specific brain circuits, mitigating the intensity of OCD symptoms. See Jordan as an example who experienced a remarkable decrease of 70% in OCD symptoms following this treatment, a life-altering change. As we advance into the world of future OCD therapies, we encounter next-generation drugs. With a unique focus on neurotransmitter pathways, these potential game-changers promise a renaissance in OCD treatment. A particular Phase II drug targeting the glutamate system stands out with promising preliminary results. Furthermore, we're skirting the horizon of precision medicine, offering bespoke treatments derived from cutting-edge genetic testing. With the goal of optimal drug selection, we can potentially minimize the commonly encountered side effects of conventional treatments such as SSRIs. It's clear we're entering an era of personalized treatments, tightly bound to the individual's unique genetic composition. The path ahead is lit bright with colossal progress and unwind the mysteries of OCD, and many expansive, exciting avenues are yet to be discovered. Cast your eye back to our journey's inception, when supernatural forces bore the blame for psychiatric disorders. We exist now in an era of new dawn, where innovative research and refined understandings revolutionized our perception, seeing OCD as a neurological and psychological disorder. Seminal shifts from behavioral therapies to an integrative approach shed light on both pharmacological treatments and cognitive behavioral therapies. SSRIs adjusting serotonin and therapy with exposure and response prevention that relinquish obsessional control, our arsenal against OCD has amplified. OCD discloses itself through a canvas filled with genetic hues and environmental shades. An accurate diagnosis sets down a marker, paving way for treatments like deep brain stimulation and next-generation drugs, leading us to a future where living with OCD transitions from an art to a science. Echoing the need for perseverance in research and the significance of personalized interventions, understand that OCD isn't a one-size-fits-all. Our path forward should remain unwavering in nurturing knowledge, fostering education, and crafting personalized strategies to empower every individual experiencing OCD.